All right, so good morning once again, everyone. My name is Amalala Alfred. I'm a business application developer, Microsoft MVP in the business application space. And um, so we are in the cohort four of textile as training. And the first week, we did an overview of Microsoft Power Platform, what Power Platform is, and all the tools in the Microsoft Power Platform. In the second week, so the first week was taught to us by Victoria. The second week, we had um, an overview and a dive into Microsoft Power Platform on the Canvas app side of things. So we looked at Canvas app, we built the Canvas app using Excel. Our Excel was our data source and Rachel taught us that. So now we are going into Dataverse. And uh, so this week, so this is the third week, we are going into Dataverse. The fourth week, we'll be looking at model driven applications right so for this particular um week our agenda is basically uh what is microsoft dataverse what is data modeling what is the table in dataverse and we are going to be creating a table together and we'll have the summary so our topic is actually data modeling with microsoft dataverse so if we are modeling data with Microsoft Dataverse, the first thing we need to understand is what exactly is Microsoft Dataverse. So this picture is a picture of me because I'm not sharing my screen. All right, so anytime you hear Microsoft Dataverse, it's basically a database. And just like other databases, what Microsoft Dataverse is used for is for storing and for managing data. So now, from what you've just heard, storing and managing data, right? We need to know what exactly do we use to store data in Microsoft Dataverse and how do we now manage this data? So managing data um, is something we are actually, we are not going to look at it in this beginner um, course, this particular course where we are looking at beginner series, right? So managing your data means um, in a business application setting, we know that all of this that we are doing is in a business application setting. So in a business application setting, you want to manage your data. Your data is like, uh, will I say the secret of the business now. So how do you now manage this? Who should see what kind of data? We have so many departments in a business, right? We have marketing departments, we have um, say sales departments, some companies have it together, some have it separately. We have um, the, for instance, we can have the um, finance department, we can have the HR and all of that. You don't want, then we can now have staff, different units. You don't want a staff to see the finance, the um, say salary of other people in the organization. So when we talk about managing data, you want to manage your data um, in a way that you will show what is to finance everything about finance to just the people in the finance department all right you will show um hr records to people in hr so that is you managing the data of the business and you're not exposing the data of the business to other people you can use microsoft database to do that especially because you are now storing all of this data inside of microsoft database but what we'll be looking at today is how do we store data in Microsoft Dataverse? What do we use to store data in Microsoft Dataverse? So in Dataverse, we actually use tables to store data. And uh, a table is a set of records. So I'm not just going to bore us with, okay, what is a table and all of that. I'm going to actually show us what it looks like, all right? Now, remember that our topic is data modeling in Dataverse. You need to model your data. For instance, I have, uh, so the example we are going to be looking at today is one that is very simple, is for people that have pets, right? So you have um, pets and you want to basically create a particular table that would house different kind of pets. You want to create another table that would ha house the owner of those pets. Let us assume that we are creating an app for um, a vet clinic right? So in that vet clinic, they want to be able to know the pets that are coming in, the time, the date that those pets come in, the breed of those pets, and the owner 
of the pet, right? Okay, and the owner of the pet. So what do we then do? We have, we don't want to merge everything together. Okay, so data modeling means that you are breaking your data into two places so that you don't just have so many columns in one data. All right, you break it into places, then you now relate it together. So today we'll look at how to create, um, how to store data in Dataverse. We'll look at, we'll have a glimpse of relationship. And when we talk about relationship, we would actually show data modeling in Dataverse. So data, anytime you hear data modeling, it basically means that you're creating a visual representation of relationship between tables. So before we jump into Dataverse and we just look at, oh, let us just create a discourse, you need to have a visual representation. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, so this is the data model. So what do we want to do? We want to create First, we want to have a pet table. So uh, the primary column is going to be pet name. Then we'll have species. So the species is going to be um, a choice. So what do we mean when we say choice? Because here we have single line, single line. Here we have data, date and time. What do we mean by all of this? So um, this basically means the um, data type, right? Now, anytime you have Anytime you hear database, right, we are talking about um, the, depending, we have different types of databases, okay? Your database can be a relational database. So when your database is a relational database, it means that it is divided into columns and rows. And that's what we've done here. We have columns, right? And we have rows. So our column is what? Our column is, this first column is organization. Organization is a column that is going to house what? It's going to house um, different um, types of organizations, right? Now, what is the data type for this column organization? And that is what, uh, let's go back. Let's go back. So now the data type for the species is going to be a choice data type. It means that there are different values inside this species we can have species dog we can have species cat we can have species rabbit okay meaning three values i'm storing three values inside species and i'm giving my user the opportunity to select should it be dog should it be cat should it be rabbit that they're actually bringing in into the vet clinic okay I'm sure you're following me and we are getting this together. So the data type for that column you are creating is what? It's a choice data type, right? That column is choice because it gives them the opportunity to select different kind of um, species, okay, of pet. Now we have breed. Breed is another column that we are going to have in our uh, pet table. So what type of data type? Will breed be single line of text. What does single line of text mean? It means that the data that you are putting inside the breed column is just going to fit into one line of one line. It's just going to be probably one sentence. Okay. And most times um, you have a limit, right? You have a limit for the uh, words that you are putting into this particular um, data type, right? So single line of text, I think it's about 250 words. I'm not wrong. Now, appointment date, you are going to select another type of data. You cannot put single line of text and you cannot put choice. Appointment date as uh, we're going to use the date and time data type. So if you are using the date and time data type, you can decide that you can decide that this date and time uh, data type, you want to format it in a way. And we'll format it, we'll use just the date. So if you want it to come with date and time, meaning that when um, your user, when they are filling in the appointment date, that they are bringing their pet inside your organization, inside your um, pet, uh, your veterinary clinic now, you're saying that you want to be able to capture the date I want to be able to capture the time. But in this case, we'll just use date alone. I just want to know the date that they are in. So this, uh, what I have here shows you 
rows and columns, right? So these are columns. Organization is a column. Fourth is a column. Uh, weeks is a column. Cost is a column. And mentor is a column. Now, these are rows. Rows contain your record, right? Now, when you are creating, when we're, you see how we're going to create this table now in Microsoft Database. All we just need to create is our column. We'll create our column, we'll select the data type like I just explained. Once we are done selecting the data type, when your customer or anybody using this, um, anybody that wants to submit a data inside of this, your database that you have created, your table that you have created in this case, what they are going to do is they are now going to fill, they're going to put in the information. What is the information for the organization? I have put in textilers, right? What is the information for the course? Course four. So for week, so weeks, week one, the course that was taught is Microsoft Power Platform and the mentor that taught it was Victoria. That's row one. That's your first record. Second record, textilers, course, the same course, 4.0, week, week two. Course, Microsoft Power Platform, the person that taught it, Rachel. Third column, textilers, 4.0, week three, Power Platform, the person that is teaching it now, Omolola, textilers. So basically, you are going to be adding record. Each record you add into a table will sit inside a row. And that is one record. So a row contains a record. The record, this is all of this, is the record for row one. All right. So now let us just dive into creating a table in database. And um, so I know that for last week, somebody told me that, um, okay, so somebody told me that they want to be able to be seen what we have, like they want to create alongside with us as we are creating. So uh, one sec. So I have, um, I did a screenshot of this. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to just drop it in the chat box. All right, so you have it in the chat box. I want us to do this together. I'm going to be calling our names. So what we want to do now is we want to open up our, uh, we want to open up uh, one sec. Okay. All right, so we want to open this up and do what? We want to, um, create our own table. Okay. Please give me one second. All right. So use the screenshot that I just uh, sent into the uh, chat box. I use this to create as I'm creating. So we're going to create together now. And um, let me just go to my window, should be this. All right, so this is actually, so this is created Microsoft Database and this is the Microsoft to learn module that you will be using. So I'm going to share my slide with us after now and the link to this is embedded in, in the slide. All right, so we are going to be doing this together and I'm just going to go to, okay, so I'm going to leave here and I will just select Power Apps so that we'll just open it together. All right, so if you, I sh I'm sure that by now, every one of us have our um, Microsoft Developer account. So what I want you to do is to go to Office 365, Office, just type in um, office.com, right? enter and you would select power apps just as i have done just come here office.com and select power apps so we are inside power apps now um select tables tables what we want to do we want to create a table now in microsoft database there are four types of 
tables that you can create. Our focus for today, we are looking at two types of tables. So the two types of tables that we'll be looking at is the custom table and the out of the box table. So the custom table are tables that you, that you create yourself, just like today now we're gonna be creating our own custom table and the name is going to be pet table, okay? So you are creating it yourself. It's not, it doesn't come with database when you like, it's not out of the box. Right, it has not been created for you. However, we have some out of the box tables already. Account table is an out of the box table, client table, out of the box table. We have user table and other, all of these tables that you're looking at, they are basically out of the box table. They come with database, all right? Now, we want to create our own table. How do we do that? Go to new table. and select new table. Now display name. So I've sent this into the um, chat box. So I want you to be doing it as I'm doing it. All right, the display name is going to be pet at your pet table, just type in pet. Plural name would, it would um, automatically come by itself. Now you go to primary column, okay? And for your primary column, I want you to select pet name. All right, pet name. So let's go through it again. Display name is pet. The plural will automatically um, type by itself and go to primary column pet name. So if you come to properties, you will see enable attachments that include note and file. You can check it if you want to be able to attach a file, but for this one, for this particular example that we're looking at, we'll not be checking it. So just save. So what we've done just now is we have created a table, okay? Now, how do we then create columns inside of this table that we are creating? That's what we're going to look at now. So it's saving. It might take just say some seconds to save, all right? Depending on how strong your internet connection is. So let me know if you have created a table. Let me know if you've created the table. I'm not doing this alone. We are doing it together. Um, Victoria, please help me check the chat box. If you've created a table, say I have, I have, I have. If you're not, say wait for me. I'm going to do this together, everyone. If you've created a table, say I have. If you have not created a table, say wait for me. I'm looking at the chat box now. Okay. Have we created a table? Where are we? Abimbola, um, Badamosi, Ola Mikosi, we have we have we have we have recreated a table. I'm waiting for answers. Have we created a table? If there are no answers, we'll just end this class. It means that no, I'm I am Olala. Hi. Yeah, I'm you. still in the process. Just a minute. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I'm waiting for you, but I must see. I've not heard anything from you. I've been Bola. Where are we? Should I just remove you guys from the class and say, "Oh, Allah, me is the only person that is following me today." Come on. Where are we? 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 Let me guide you and direct you on what to do. I'm still waiting for, so let me, let me know when you are done. Um, what part are you? Hi, let me pause. What part are you now? Done? Are you trying to create a table? Where exactly are you? I've been yeah, my... Where are you? Go ahead. Let me pause. So my network is actually still taking time to load, so that's why. But where exactly are you? Have you um, have you created a table? No. So I just logged on to um the empowerapps.make. Um, make the powerapps.com. Make the powerapps .com. Uh -huh. Yes. So like, it's just like it's freezing and just taking time because of the network. Okay. 
that's fine. So I'm just going to go ahead. This is recorded, so you can check it later. All right. No so we okay. have, we have, you're, you're welcome. All right. So we have pet name that we have already created. Okay. So let us add column into, let's add column into our pet data, uh, pet table. So you can see tables, pet. Pet is the name of this table. And let us just add column. So I'm going to add another column. And um, so, okay, but let's do this together. Look at the screenshot that I put inside of the um, chat box and call out those columns for me. So aside from pet name, what other column do we have there? So I can actually view the charts. I don't have access to the charts. Victoria, please, can you do that for me? All right, so aside pet name, we have yes. species and is a choice color. Okay, so we have species and the data type is choice. So for data type, you just select choice like this. All right, and um, ensure that the searchable is checked. Um, so, um, Basically, I'm just going to explain this. Behavior is simple. We have different types of behavior for a particular column, calculated or simple. Simple means just leave it as it is. Calculated means when you want that column to be able to calculate, um, you want it to give you a calculated um, number. Basically, you want to say calculate column A and column B, right? But this particular column is not a calculated column, it's a simple column. They're required. You want it to either be required field or recommended. Recommended, we tell them that, oh, this is recommended. We recommend you to fill this. Or required would be that they must fill, they must put in a data inside this column. Optional is, you know, you can put in a data or not put in a data. So we're just going to leave it as optional. And um, sync with global choice. It means that you would be the one to, con to create your own choice. And anytime you want to create um, a choice, you can actually select from this particular choice. Let's do it together. You understand once we do it, all right? So um, you can either create a new choice or you sync with this choice. Sync with this choice means that there are already choices that have been created, all right? You can just select any of these. And so let's select one. This is tech type. We have tech type and if you load it you will see the different choices that we have on that tech type if you're thinking with this you are selecting this particular choice so you can choose between biz apps or dynamics 365 okay but that's not what we are doing today we want to create our own um, choice so we're going to create a new choice and it will be um say pet species when you're creating, ensure that you are putting, you are naming it properly. If you just put species, what kind of species are you talking about? What if you want to use it another time and you don't know the type, especially uh, the specific type of species you're talking about? So we're talking about the pet species, and the first label that we'll be putting, we'll put in um, dog. The value is one. Then we'll put in a new choice and say um, cat. The value is two. We'll put in a new label and say rabbit. Rabbit. And the value is three. Then we are going to save this. So now you have created a choice. And the name of the choice is the pet choice the pet species so now that you are thinking i'm going to think with um so i'm going to go back and i'm going to look for pet species p p for pets yes this is its pet species and um, if you go to edit choice you will see what you have 
uh, choosing. You can decide to edit this, add new ones. If you add new ones, it's going to uh, automatically change the global choice that you have. So if, for instance, if I remove rabbit, anytime I go to pet species, I will only see dog and cat. So we'll just leave this. We are not editing it. And we are going to save. Now that we save, we've saved, we have species. Our species is connected to a global choice. So I just explained. So we have uh, two types of uh, choices, basically. We have the global choice and we have the local choice. Local choice means that if I create this particular choice, it will only be available for this table. If I create a global choice, what will happen? Anybody that is creating a table and wants to create a choice can actually make use of this, my pet choice that I just created. And I use it as a global uh, global choice. All right. Okay. So we want to add another column. Victoria, what's the other column that we have there aside from species? We should have breed. Breed, breed, the data type of breed is single line of text, meaning that the data type, what you want to put in here is just going to be, say, a sentence or a single line of text anyways. Um, the format is text, so you can choose different types of format. Let's put in text. The behavior, I explained behavior already. The behavior is, is simple. Is it required? So we're just going to use optional for now. And let's look at the advanced options. What do we have there? So basically, uh, advanced options, we have the schema name is breed. Maximum character count is 100. All right. And um, we are saying enable auditing. So this column, so now enable auditing basically means that when something is being changed, you want to be able to know when it's modified. So you have enabled auditing for this column. Now you need to first enable auditing for your organization. When you enable auditing for your organization, you'll be able to audit this particular column and you can save. So the next column that we'll be adding is the date and time. So basically it's going to be appointment date. I want to know when appointment date. So I want to know when a pet is brought into my veterinary clinic. And the data type will be what to be date and time. Now, remember I talked about you formatting your data type. So I want it to just be date. I want you to be able to bring, uh, I want you to, I want to be able to take in the date alone, right? The behavior is still simple. We save this. So if you go to, let me just show us our PowerPoint again and show us our data model. So this is exactly what we are trying to create. We are trying to create a pet table and that's what we just, we just did. We have created our pet table. The primary name is pet name. The species is of type dog, right? Sorry, it's, the species is of data type choice. And for the data type choice, we have three different values inside of this choice data type. The name of our choice data type is pet species. The, the name of our choice rather is pet species and you can choose dog, cat or rabbit. And we have another column called breed. The data type is single line of text. Appointment date, date and time is our data type and we have formatted it to just dates, okay? Now, we are done creating this particular table. We want to now map it to another table called account table. So what we are going to look at now is relationship between tables, and that's actually data modeling. So we are modeling data, but what you're looking at now is the visualization of what we will be creating on our database. So what the relationship type that we are going to be using is many to one. So let us look at how to do this in Microsoft database. Okay. So if you go to new. All right, so this is my database. We go to new. So this is my database. This is pet table. This is what we just created. We have created the columns, okay? So if you go to new now, we want to create a relationship. So you can create a relationship using 
um, this route, many to one relationship. All right. There are other ways that you can actually create a relationship. But for this particular lesson, because next week we have another lesson that I'll be taking and I will show us other ways that you can create um, relationship. So we'll go through this route. Relationship, we'll select the many to one relationship. And the current table is actually, so you're creating a many to one relationship, meaning that the table that you are on would be the one to carry the many um, side of the relationship, all right? Then you're going to select a table that would be what would be the one related to uh, the, your table pet, right? So the many is going to be your table pet. The one is going to be what is great. So it's important you understand the side that each are on. So you want to create a many to one relationship. The many is going to be what your table, the table that you are on currently, which is the pet table. The one is going to be, it's going to be the table that you're trying to connect to. So we are trying to connect to the accounts table. And remember that we are looking at two types of table in this particular lesson. We are looking at the custom table, which is what we have created, the pet table. And we are looking at a um, an, uh, one out of the box table, which is the accounts table. So we are just going to select it, account. So you might be asking, ah, but we did not create account table. Yeah, you don't create uh, an out of the box table. It comes with database. That's why it's called an out of the box table. So all you just need to do is just select it. So you can actually customize an out of the box table. You can put in columns into it, but that table itself, you don't create it because it has been created for you. Okay. So now that I've, I'm done mapping this, I've mapped the table account to the pet table, I'm going to click done. So what have we done now? We have successfully mapped our table um, pet to our account table. So we are done with our data modeling. So next, next thing we'll basically be looking at is view. So for you to create a view, you can just the same way you can select new on that data experience and select view. Or you can just come to data experience here, select view, and um, you have active pets already. So we have views already. Um, I would say created for this table, but you will now be the one to customize it. So we are going to select the accounts, uh, the active pet um, view. So we're going to select the active pet view and you are going to put in the column that you want to see. So basically what is a view? You can liken a view to a virtual table. Right, you can liken a view to a virtual table, meaning that I can say that, oh, I want to create a view that will give me an insight into the record. So what kind of insight am I looking for? I can say, um, I want to create a view and I just want to be able to see a particular species, species cat, okay? So, but that's not what we want to do. We're just going to create a table that will show us active data. So any data that is submitted into this particular um, pet table, we're just going to see it here. So that's what we want to do. So you would bring in the columns that you want to see. So I want to see the breed. I just tap on it. Um, select, I want to see appointment date, very important. And I want to see species. So you can just scroll down to look for species, select species. So what date was it created? This is it here. But you can also decide to remove because created on came with it right just like out of the box i don't want to see this all i want to see i want to see my pet name i want to see my breed i want to see the appointment date and i want to see species so you can make this bigger appointment date and species you can also adjust bringing your species here and allow appointment dates to be here all right so now you have created what you have created your view save and publish okay so what have we done so far? We created a table. We created a relationship between that table. And what did we relate together? We brought in, we created um, a custom table called pet table. We created, um, we didn't bother creating 
another table. Why? Because we already have an out of the box table called account. So we merged or we, re we decided to relate, we did a relationship between the account table and the pet table. And we did a many to one relationship between these tables. So we are going back. Select pet. And all right, so just load in. So now for this pet table, we now have um, we have our pet name, we have species, we have breed, and we have appointment date. So basically, what we've done now is we have created um, our pet table. We have done the relationship between the table, like I just explained, and we have created our view. Okay. So now the next thing we want to quickly create is forms. So automatically, anytime you're creating a form, you have three types of form. You have the main form, you have card, and you have quick view. All of these forms do different things and they look in, uh, they have different uh, look basically. So we are going to be using the main form, okay? So select the main form. So it's loading. And like I said, this all of this loading is uh, the duration is based on your own internet speed. Okay. So I just wait a while for this to load. And when it's done loading, we are going to create a form view. So I'm going to create a form for people. So basically, what is a form used for? I already explained what a view is used for. A view gives you the insight into data, yeah the data that you have in your table, what does it, uh, a form, what is the form used for? A form is used to get data, collect data, right? You want people to come into your vet clinic and put in data. Okay, so we are going to go into form now and uh, it's still loading, form is loading, so let's just give it. Okay, well. Okay, so it's still loading. It has a uh, loaded halfway, loaded partially. We have, so all of these are the columns that you can actually add to your form. So it's still loading. You're going to see what the form looks like and we'll be able to put in columns inside our form. So um, another thing you need to know is that Power Platform is a low code tool. So low code or no code. I've not written one single line of code since I started. Model driven, um, you start just like the name is, right? We know that when you're trying to build um, an application in Power Platform, you can either use Canvas or model driven. So it's telling me that I have troubles loading my form preview. Let's just... Okay, so it's loading now. Yes, so you have Canvas app or model driven app. When you, um, for Canvas app, you have different data sources that you can actually use for Canvas app. Model driven, you have just database, this database, right? Anytime you're creating database, you are not writing a single line of code, right? Depending on the kind of, um, depends on the kind of, will I say process you are trying to, solution you're trying to create, Okay, it depends on the process, depends on the solution. All right. So this is not, um, yeah. All right. So now this is what your form looks like. Okay. Like I said, we've not written any line of code at all. What we just want to do now is we want to put our form together. You can, so this form says new pets. All right. You can decide to change this name however you want to change it. So this is new pet and it's feeding on the pet table, okay? So now pet name, 
pet name is a primary column, so it's required. It's required that you put the name of the pet. So what I want to do now is I want to bring in um, other columns. So I will just drag this and drop it here and bring in the account. So that's the appointment date is here. I'm bringing in breed. What am I doing? I'm just dragging it. Okay, created. I don't want created. I can um can take this away if I want. So um, another thing that I want to bring in, I want to bring in. So I've brought in pet name. I have brought in um, appointment date, and I've brought in breed. Okay. So we need to also bring in species. Remember, we created species. Bring in species here. All right, so it's just taking time to, to uh, show. I guess my internet is a little bit slow. All right, so. So we have the pet name, we have appointment dates, we have breed, there's created by here, there's owner here. Let's just wait for a while for the species that we added to show. Okay. So now, okay, yeah. So it's showing now, it just took a while for it to just um display here so we have pet name we have appointment date we have breed we have species we have a created by so anybody that is creating this particular record the name will be here we have owner so one thing i can do i can come here and um i can come here and hide this particular um column I don't want people to come here and always see this. So I can just come here and hide it. All right. But I want to hide not just the label. If I bring back the label, see this here, I want to hide all of this. Okay, Eden. Now we have pet name, we have this created by. I can decide to hide this created by also. So I just want to see pet name, appointment date, breed, and species. So what will I do? I will save and publish. So what have we been able to do? We have been able to create a table. We have been able to map relationship. We have been able to create a view and we've been able to create a form, all right? And the reason, if you look at this pet name is required, the reason is required is at the time you were creating your table, it was required. Appointment dates, breed, species are not at all required. So I'm saving and publishing. It's going to save and publish. And um, if we look at our agenda for today, we've actually come to the end of today's class. So by next class, we are going to look at how we actually now populate data into Dataverse using this form. So we need an interface. That we'll be able to use to. So all we just did is we have structured our database, right? We have um, we have structured our database. We have done data modeling. We created a table in Dataverse, and on that table that we created, we did a relationship. So we mapped it to the account table using a many-to-one relationship, meaning that we can have many entries related to the account table because it's a many to one. So you select one account table, you map this particular record to it. You select another account table, you map this particular record to it. And um, we, yeah, so we created that together. We created a view for this particular pet uh, table called pet table. We created a form for it. And that is everything that we have been able to look at in this class. So now I expect that in this class, you know, you now know what a Microsoft Dataverse is. Remember that a Dataverse is used to do two things majorly, manage your data. In managing data, there are so many things you can do when it comes to managing data, security and all of that. Then you store data. How do we store data? We use 
uh, tables to store our data. By storing our data, you do data modeling. And that's what, so we did a, a visual representation of this. And we also um, did, we, we did it practically. So we mapped the account table to what to the pet table. Under the pet table, we have three columns and we have one um, primary name, all right? And yeah, so now you also know how to create a database table. So next week, I can call on anybody to say, show me the table that you created. And I, I would see how you've created your table. I'll see your views. I'll see all of that inside the table that you've created. So next week, what are we doing next week? Next week, we'll be creating a model-driven application that would show us the form that we just created. We are going to use it in our model-driven application. We are going to be able to see the importance of the uh, relationship that we have done between the custom table that we have created and the out of the box table, which is the account table. And um, yes, so all of this will be done using the Microsoft database inside of the model driven application. So join us again next week as we do, as we build model driven applications. Basically, so we have come to the end of this and you're free to reach out to me on Twitter. My name is Amalala Alfred on Twitter. My name is Amalala Alfred on LinkedIn. My username on Instagram is Amalala Alfred underscore. So you can check me out on all of these um, social media platform. And um, you can reach out to me if you have any questions on Dataverse, on form creation, on um, relationship between tables. I'll see you all again next week. So do we have questions? Do we have questions? Do we have questions? If you have any questions, you don't understand what relationship means. What does um, what does relationship between table? What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean to what does many to one relationship mean? Are there more relationships and all of that? So do we have the, 